Hello and welcome to English 2450 COM 2010 Intro to Film Week 8 Lecture Video Number 3 on Spatial and Temporal Relations in Editing. So when I refer to spatial relations, I'm talking about space, um, the physical space depicted in a film. So editing allows a filmmaker to juxtap juxtapose or compare two points in space and imply a relationship between them. So a really good example of how the editor is able to use spatial relations to tell a story is through the use of what's called an establishing shot. So if we look at these images here on the left hand side of the page, we have shot A and shot B. Shot A is what's called an establishing shot. Shot B, we assume is connected or related to shot A. So if we see the exterior of a restaurant in shot A, and in shot B we see a group of friends sitting at a table, we assume that table is inside this restaurant. We don't have to see these characters walk into the front door to know that this is where they are. The shot establishes the location, that way in shot B we know where we are, exterior, interior of the same place. Now. Was this scene actually shot inside Tom's restaurant? Probably not. This is probably a set. But we're able to take these two images, put them together, and imply a relationship between them. Establishing shot and then an interior, right? Another important thing to think about when we're talking about spatial relations, the idea that an editor can put two images next to each other and we are going to imply as an audience that they are connected in space is something called the Kuleshov effect. Now, this is named after Lev Kuleshov, who was a Soviet filmmaker in like the 1910s, 1920s, and he discovered this mental phenomenon where if you put images side by side, the audience would infer that they were related to each other even if there was no evidence whatsoever that they were related to each other. So if you show a series of images back to back in a film, we are going to do our best to connect them in our minds even if there doesn't seem to be a connecting thread. So his experiment was to show the same image of a man with some new kind of context added and then show the, the man again. So here are the series of images. It's a man, a bowl of soup, and then back to the man. A man, a child in a coffin, and then back to the man. The man, a woman kind of staring off into the distance, and then back to the man. And what he realized when he showed audiences these images in sequence is that the audience would infer that they were uh, that they were connected to each other even though there wasn't any evidence of connection. So in the top series of images, the audience would say, oh, this man is so hungry for this bowl of soup. In the middle series of images, the audience would say, oh, the man is so distraught over the death of the child. And then in the third series of images, oh, they would say the man loves this woman so much. Now, we never see the man in the bowl of soup in the same shot. We never see the man and the child in the same shot. We never see the man and the woman in the same shot. But we infer that they're happening at the same place and the same time, and thus we draw a connection between them. Spectators will infer that a spatial, excuse me, a spatial or temporal whole exists even if they only see portions of it. So they assume that the man and the soup exist in the same space and the same time and the man is responding to the bowl of soup, even though there isn't any evidence that they do actually exist in the same space and the same time. Now think back to the idea of an establishing shot. It doesn't matter if Seinfeld and his friends are actually inside time, uh, Tom's restaurant because when we see the exterior of Tom's restaurant and then we see them all sitting together at a table, we infer or imply that those things are happening at the same place and the same time, that they're actually connected. Now, editors can use this, the idea of the Kuleshov effect, that the audience will piece the, uh, piece the bits together even if there's not a lot of evidence. They use this to their advantage. Because by showing a series of shots together, we know that the spectator is going to infer that things happen at the same place and the same time, even if they didn't. Even if they didn't. So that's essentially what the Kuleshov effect means. It's a mental phenomenon where the audience responds to a series of images and assumes that they're all kind of occurring in the same place and time and that they're connected to each other. Now, related to spatial relations are temporal relations, right? We can't have space without time. We need both of those together. Now, in temporal relations, I'm specifically referring to how the editor uses 
their craft to create a storyline and what that storyline tells us about time. Now, remember that the order of events in a plot of a film might not be reflected by the order of the shots as they are presented to us. There are a lot of films that use editing to show a story out of order and then ask the audience to kind of piece it back together on their own. Pulp Fiction is a really good example of this. Memento is a really good example of this. An even more common example is think about all of the films in which we know that a murder happens first. And we already know who the murderer is, possibly, at the beginning of the film. But then the detective has to solve it. So we go back in time to what happened before the murder to lead up to that point. So we start with the end point, And then we move backwards from there. So the order of events in a plot may or may not coincide with the way that the film actually presents those events. Different editing methods can be used to alter temporal relations between shots. Now these include flashback, flash forward, and freeze frame, which you're probably already familiar with. Flashback is when we move back in time to something that happened earlier. Flash forward is when we move ahead in time to something that hasn't yet happened. And freeze frame is essentially where you just freeze what's happening in the frame so that you can focus on it for a little while. Now, two additional ways that an editor can alter the temporal relations between shots is through through the use of overlapping editing and elliptical editing, which are a little bit more specific and difficult to define. Now, overlapping editing refers, refers to when the action from the end of one shot is repeated by the beginning of the next shot. It expands the amount of time an action takes to show. When I say more real time than real time, I mean it takes longer on the film than it would actually take to do that thing. Now, this is used in action movies most often to show the same stunt from different angles, right? So uh, the editing documentary that we watched showed um, a shot from a Vin Diesel movie where he is kind of on this motorcycle and he's launching himself up over um, this fence. And it takes much longer to show in the film than it would take in real life to do that actual stunt because they show it from so many different angles and they kind of show it in repeat almost. This is known as overlapping editing. The image overlaps and it takes even longer to show than it typically would take. This isn't incredibly common. What's more common is what's called elliptical editing. Now, elliptical editing presents action in a way that takes less time on screen than it actually would take in the story. So less real time than real time. Think about every movie you've ever seen. How often do you see a character going to the bathroom or making a meal and taking the entire amount of time to make the meal that it really would take? Sleeping for eight hours, right? We skip past those things because they're not interesting. We want them to consume less time on the screen because we want to move on to the, the juicy parts, the parts where things actually happen. So you might show the character falling asleep and the character waking up, but you're not gonna show the eight hours in the middle where they're just laying in bed, right? This is what elliptical editing does. It cuts things out. It cuts things out. So there are several different ways for creating an ellipsis. You can fade or dissolve or wipe. You can cut away and then cut back to show the progression of an action, or you can use a montage sequence. So we've already talked a little bit about fading, dissolving, and wiping. Now, all three of those transitions imply that time has passed. They imply that time has passed. By cutting away and then cutting back to show an action, we can show that some time has passed, but we don't have to show the entire action. So you might have a character at the bottom of a set of stairs. We cut away and then we cut back. And when we cut back, he's at the top of the set of stairs. Now, we know he didn't teleport to the top of the stairs. He actually walked all the way up. But we don't have to see him walk all the way up the entire flight of stairs to know that he did. That's an example of elliptical editing. We create an ellipsis. We cut out the middle. Now, the last type of elliptical editing is a montage sequence, which is a very kind of specific thing. Montage sequence should not be confused with Soviet montage style editing. A montage sequence is specifically a segment of film. It summarizes a topic or compresses the passage of time into brief, symbolic, or typical images. As I said, not to be confused with Soviet montage. 
Now, montage sequences are typically used to show something that would take a long period of time and condense it down into a short sequence that still conveys a lot of information, but takes less time. So sports training montage is probably one of the most common uses of the montage sequence where we know that a character has to get really good at a certain thing, but they don't have a lot of time to do it. So we're just going to show clips of them like trying out this thing, um, failing, getting better, and like slowly building themselves up. The Rocky movies are incredibly famous for this, but almost every kind of sports movie includes some type of montage sequence. So montage sequence is a segment of a film that compresses the passage of time using kind of symbolic or typical images. So that covers uh, spatial and temporal uses of editing. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about continuity editing, how it's defined, the rules of continuity editing, editing the techniques used, and different alternatives to Hollywood uh, continu continuity editing as the dominant form of filmmaking. So stay tuned for video number four.